In today's video, we're going to be checking out the GTX 1050 and seeing how it does in 2024. Now this model of the GTX 1050 might look familiar, it's because it's literally the exact same model I used in the RX 460 video, so pretty funny. The 1050 can generally be found for a bit more than the RX 460 and it is a bit better, although I did get a good deal on this card, it was 35 bucks. And of course this GPU doesn't require any sort of power connectors, it just takes power straight from the PCIe slot. So it's a pretty nice GPU to pop into a system and just have it ready to go, no extra set required. Anyways, that's enough about the GPU, let's see how it actually performs. First up we have Minecraft Java with Optifine, and we're running at 1440p at 1200 distance. We're seeing some pretty nice performance here, obviously it's Minecraft so it'll run on a freaking potato, but overall really nice and smooth experience, no complaints at all. And then we have Minecraft again with Soda's Vibrant Shaders Light at 8 render distance. And we're running at 1440p with a 75% render scale. Still a relatively high refresh rate experience. And you do have a bit of room to either up the resolution, use a different shader pack, or maybe even up the render distance a little bit. So really nice performance on Minecraft overall. Highly recommend it. Next up we have Minecraft Dungeons at fanciest settings 1080p and we're running at a very respectable 100 to 140 FPS. Another very nice experience from the GTX 1050. Obviously Minecraft Dungeons isn't the most intensive game in the world, but still, really good performance here, can't complain at all. Next we have CS2 at the lowest settings, 1080p, and we're getting a very respectable 100 to 170 FPS. I would call this borderline competitive. Obviously some people would want a bit higher if they have a higher refresh rate monitor, but for entry level competitive play, it's pretty nice. During more intensive scenes it might drop a bit more, which might be a turnoff for some people, but you can always adjust the resolution or turn FSR if you want, but still a very nice experience. Didn't see any major drops, so 100% playable. Next we have Teardown at 1080p lowest settings with a 75% render scale. Obviously the performance could be better here, but still very solid performance coming from a GPU released in 2016, especially a budget GPU. Lots of fun can be had here and campaign mode running even better because you, don't, you aren't doing stupid stuff like me, so <laughs> good experience overall. Next we have RE4 Remake, running at the 1080p prioritized performance preset, and we do have FSR2 unbalanced. Performance here was very respectable. This isn't one of those games where you need a super high refresh rate to do well the game, so 30 to 50 FPS is very nice. You could probably even lock to 30 and never even see a drop once. So overall nice experience, no problems running this game on this GPU. Great job, 1050. Next we have Hogwarts Legacy at low settings to AP, FSR2 and performance. Now this is one of those games where it was very all over the place. You'd have a stretch of performance where it'd be fine, you know, hover around a 30 to 60 FPS range, but then you'd have random slowdowns when loading into new areas. And I'm assuming this is VRAM related because this GPU does only have 2 gigabytes of VRAM. So I wouldn't really recommend playing this game on this GPU, but maybe with some tweaking it could be better, I don't know. But regardless, not the best experience, I would steer clear of this one. Next we have Pal World with a mixture of settings at 1080p. I would consider this to be a very solid and stable FPS, it's not really all over the place, which is nice to have. Obviously performance is kind of iffy on these pre-release games, so keep that in mind, but overall I wouldn't have any issues playing this game casually with this GPU, perfectly fine experience. Next we have Elden Ring at low settings, 1080p, and performance was pretty stable. It was a bit on the lower side, but I think a cap at 30 would probably do fine, or maybe lowering the resolution if you want a little higher FPS. For a game like Elden Ring, you really just want to have consistent performance, and the 1050 does deliver this. However, if you want a higher overall frame rate, I would recommend lowering the resolution. Overall though, just fine, no problems here. And finally, we have Apex Legends at lowest settings, 1080p. We're getting a good 60 to 140 FPS, depending on what's going on. Not the most consistent performance in the world, but definitely playable. I wouldn't call it competitive at all. It's not within that frame rate. But if you do want a more competitive experience, I would recommend lowering the resolution a bit, and maybe you'd see a bit higher of a low frame rate. But overall, perfectly fine experience on 1050. Good for casual play. Lock to 60, and you'll probably be good all day.
In conclusion, how does the 1050 fare in 2024? I would say for lighter indie games or competitive esports games, it's perfectly fine. You can only expect so much of a GPU from 2016 that was already pretty low end at the time. It's perfectly usable for the price. Things do get a bit dicey for AAA gaming, and some of them just strip will not work properly, but it's still doable in some cases. And if you temper your expectations, then you have no problems playing games on a GTX 1050. And with that, I appreciate you guys watching my video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching.